Step three. Now we are going to learn how to connect the node to the internet. So back from before, when you created your account, you should have this result. You should be able to log in into the community website, just to make sure that you have everything set. When you click sign in, you should be able to land on that page. Okay. If you have that, then you're good from the previous step. Right now, what we're going to do, we're going to connect the now robot. Before you turn it on, when you unpack it and you have your now robot, get out the Ethernet cable that you can see right here. And connect your robot on the back. You have a little trap that you can remove. And you have an opening here with a space for your Ethernet cable. Connect your cable right there on the back and from the head of the robot to your router. We want to have the robot connected to the internet. So take access to your router could be uh, in the wall or it doesn't matter. Talk to your IT department if you don't know where your router is. Connect your robot just like that. Now we're going to turn on the robot by pressing once is chest button and the robot is going to start. It will take one or two minutes. I don't have an exact timing on how long it takes. However, you have indication on what is the stage the robot is at. By looking at the LEDs around the ears here, you're going to see the progress of the loading of the operating system of the robot. When it's fully loaded, it's going to be all blue and the robot is going to say Onagnuk, which is in his own language a way to say hello. Until you see that, just wait patiently. Make sure at this stage that your computer is connected to the same router as your robot. It is very important that you have the computer and the robot on the same network. It doesn't matter if it's your phone, if it's a the what matters is that it's the same. Okay? The idea, what we want to get here, is the robot connected to the internet so we can give him an IP address, which will be an address that is going to be the robot address. And with that address, we are going to access the robot web page. We're going to show that in a second. Bear with us. Look at the ears here. We're almost done, three quarters done. Fully done. Wait for the sound, the Onagnuk, it's going to come in a second. Here we go. So you heard that sound, the ears were all blue and we still waited for about 30 seconds before he blinked and said Onagnuk. Now that he said that, the robot is ready. Oh. Now watch what I'm going to do. When the robot is first starting, he might have a behavior. He might be looking for faces. He might move. That's okay. We don't need it for now and we're going to talk about that later ex and extensively in the training. For now it's okay. What I want to get, if you co connected the robot correctly, you should be able to press the chess button and hear the IP address like that. Hello, I'm Goofy. My internet address is 192, 168, 14, 115. We may have seen that the robot said his name, so we named that robot Goofy, and his IP address. You should, when you click on the chess button of your robot, you should hear, hello, my name is now, and my IP address is, is going to give a set of four numbers. Let me do that again. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to type this IP address right here. 14, okay, so watch what I'm doing here. I have pressed the button and the IP address, the way it was given to me, I type it in here. So you open any type of browser, could be an Internet Explorer or Chrome, whatever you preferred browser is, and you type the IP address of the robot. Now, if your computer is on the same network as the robot, if you press Enter, you're going to be able to access the web page of your robot. 
If you're not, you're going to have an error message. We're going to watch here. There we go. If you get to that page, this site can be reached. It means that you are not on the same network of your robot. So make sure, again, that you're on the same network. Let me now connect to the same network to show you what is the correct page that you should have after typing the IP address. So for, for the listeners, what I've just done is change my network and move to the network where my robot is connected to. And here, I have authentication required that window is popping up. You're going to have to type your username. By default, it's NAO. It's all lower cap. And password, by default, is also NAO. We strongly recommend to not change the password. You can change the username later, and I'm going to show you how to do that. We strongly recommend not to change the password, because if you lose your password, it's going to be a pain to retrieve it. We're going to have to do a factory reset, and it takes time. We don't want to get there. So please. Don't change your password, and if or if you do, make sure that you keep good track or of where your password is, and uh, you know which password is your password. Okay, here we go. Once you type username and password, you will click login. You will now access the web page of your now robot, and we have here three tabs. The first tab with the now head, we have some properties about the version of the operating system, the language of the robot, the volume, etc. We don't need to get into the details here right now. We can uh, cover that later in the, in the training. What I want to show you is mostly these two tabs. The tab in the middle gives you here a list of the Wi-Fi networks that are available. So if you're in your school, you probably have multiple Wi-Fi networks, maybe one for the lab, maybe one for the guest, maybe one for the classroom. Um, make sure that you connect your robot with the Wi-Fi network that you are going to use during the year, or that you are going to use in your class, or in your library, whatever the setup is. Again, if you need to talk to your IT department here, don't hesitate to talk to them. So you can connect your robot to a Wi-Fi network. Sometimes, some people have trouble connecting the robot. It could be security reasons. It could be they have firewalls, and not every device can be connected to the Wi-Fi of the school. So please work with your IT department. We have a way to uh, give the MAC address of the robot if it's needed in order to add in the router the MAC address of your robot. If you do need that, contact us. Um, and we'll show you that, or I will make another short video just dedicated to the how to find MAC address. So please watch that video. Let's say that everything is set up and you can access uh, the Wi-Fi that works for you. Please do that. Make sure that your computer is connected on the same Wi-Fi network as your robot. It's very important. The Wi-Fi is important because we don't want you to work with the robot plugged in like that. If it falls, that can really damage the head. That's why the Wi-Fi is very important. It's more convenient as well, so please do that. The third tab that I want to talk about is this one. This tab right now for you is going to be empty like this. What we want to do here, this is the place where the applications or the behaviors that are existing out there will be downloaded and sitting in your now memory. And you're going to view them right here. In order to do that, we need to connect and to link your now robot to the account that you created on the community web page. If you remember, we created on the community web page of SoftBank Robotics. So with the email address and password, you created your account right on that, on that page right there. Remember that? Retrieve your information here. Go back to the web page of the robot and click Edit Account. This is the place where you are going to type the account 
with your password and connect. When you do that, the robot is going to know that it's linked to your account, and your account knows that it's linked to your robot. Now, you can link multiple robots to one account. You can link an account to multiple robots uh, or multiple accounts to one robot. Um, but you have to have that link. That link is important so you can later go back in here on the store and download applications. Now, we are going to cover that in the training. Don't worry about it. What I want to make sure is that you have that account created that you can access that web page of the robot and that ideally if you can connect the two already that would be great so then we can go to the store later and connect the and and, and download sorry and download applications while you're on the robot we're going to cover that in the training again Thank you and don't forget to watch the next and last step.